why but all right so the meeting is being live streamed so i want to do something now so we are live
Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello, hello. Hey, <laughs> good to see you all. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Greetings from Saudi. Hey, hello, Rama. How are you? Very good, thank you. Looking forward to another motivating hour. Mm -hmm. Good, <laughs> good, good. And I'm I really my so colleague. I have a colleague yeah, here from my days in New York, Eva Owen has joined us. Nice to see you, dear Eva. Nice seeing you, Eva. Okay, so today we will uh, continue our discussion. Yesterday we discussed about the setting goals and the importance uh, for each one of us to have a goal. And we are here not talking about any goals, but the, how they call it, C-type goal. That's something you never done before because you will not feel the growth until you start stretching yourself, getting out of the comfort zone. So I hope everyone is ready for day two. They already set up their own goals and because we wanna take you step by step how you start working and seeing how you can uh, uh, start taking actions, but you need to understand there's few things that might be holding you back to take the first action and the first step. So we will go like yesterday, we will be sharing some slides, me and Paddy, we will be sharing our own experience. Then at the end, we will be opening uh, the, uh, what's called the floor for questions. Any questions you have in mind, keep it. You can put it in the chat or people on the live today, I managed to stream it to the Facebook. So anyone has any questions on the Facebook, he can post it and we will come back to him later. So are you ready? All right. So today, we, as we said, we'll be discussing mainly on a paradigm. And uh, let me just, tell you a small story, which is maybe each one of us has uh, faced the same thing. One day I was walking on those uh, bushes in the, let's say the garden, whatever you want to call it, where I found a lot of green trees. They were so impressive for me in a way when I start looking at, at them with different color of greenish here and there. Then, I noticed something really hold me to stop and think about it. And it is, why are some trees taller than others? It is reasonable, but I'm talking about same kind of trees and where they are all in the same place, same soil, same environment. However, others, you can see they are taller where the rest, they're still shorter, they're not able to find their own ways. And what I found out that there were those trees that who are not able to go taller, they were blocked by other trees. There was no enough light for them. And this is why they're not able to get and grow beyond what they are right now. And this situation really brings me to our topic today. We are all people, for example, living in Dubai or on, in the GCC or on the globe. We have the same environment. We have the same opportunities. However, few are able to go taller and others, they're still struggling. And mainly, this is, will be an introduction for our topic today. So today is how you can get rid of what is holding you back. I'm sharing, this is a picture for a gentleman. This is a, a company I work with. And their story that when I start working with them, because they are a team, they are a corporate, once I ask, uh, the owner and the CEO of this company, I said, how much can you grow your business year over year? He said, 
if we stretch maybe 10 to 15 percent i said come on you can stretch more he said if we go wild crazy the maximum we can reach is 30 percent i said okay for me i will not work with you so excuse me unless you set a goal of 50 percent or more he said you're crazy muhammad i cannot work with this i told him trust me i will show you how you can double and triple your in, uh, uh, sales revenue so we agreed that we will work on a 50 percent switch and some of this his own beliefs that he was rejecting trying to look beyond that 10 and 15 percent because this is the norm in the market and this is happens with all of us sometimes there's an idea comes i said oh i'm not able i'm not enough to do this and that so i immediately like i want to do something and i kill it on the same time the moment we decided we want to go for 50 percent within two months he was able not to go to a 50% pool, but to 100%. He almost doubled his uh, annual uh, monthly sales. And by the end, he was targeting to reach to about triple the, what he was doing. It's mainly just allowing yourself when we said, you have to take a decision. Don't think about the how, because the how will immediately block you and prevent you from going beyond that one. So we discussed yesterday this. You only need to do two things for achieve anything you want. You need to know where you are right now and where you're heading. I look on the goals of many people who participate in uh, the Zoom call. Some, they want to start up their own business. Some, they have their own consulting. Others want to start their fashion. And so there are different ones. So it's a clear goal. You're not the first one and you will not be the last one to do that business. So what the heck is so simple and obvious why you're not moving and doing it. And some people think, no, because my goal is too big. And to be honest, it's not your goal, the problem. It is mainly, and this is why I ask why so many people are stuck their goal is not, you're not the first one to set up coaching company or consulting or uh, a fashion or, or, or. But why so many people are stuck? The problem always not in the goal, but in where you are right now. And this is what we call here, it is your paradigm. And simply what is a paradigm? I would come more to the definition. It is your current beliefs and habits. It is your current beliefs and habits, and we will highlight more. What you believe is the one that is driving you either to go forward or to stop or do nothing, because this is it's like a mental program. So this is where all the problem comes from, is where you are. Everyone set a goals, but they cannot take the first step because simply because where they are and their paradigm. So paradigm simply, it is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior and almost all our behaviors is habitual. Anything we do is habitual without thinking. We do it like you wake up, have a cup of coffee every day you do it. you take a shower have a cup of coffee drive to the office then you find out you're in the middle of the meeting at 11 o'clock what the heck happens from six o'clock a.m when i woke up till i reach i don't know so there's something behind the scenes that is driving me to do the same things and this is how we call it the paradigm now these are some examples to what people had shared who registered in this event. And I can combine them in the different types of what is holding people back. Some are fear, fear of failure, or I don't know the technology, or uh, I wanna do more research and more market research and more market research. 
in a way that because I'm fearing to take the first step and the more analysis, the more paralysis you will become or not enough visibility or opportunities to develop. There is not enough opportunities. To be honest, the day I started, decided to work with Paddy, every day I'm finding more and more opportunities, how we can work together and develop our uh, business relationship. Because I took a decision, Paddy took her decisions and we start seeing any opportunities we see it in front of us, we immediately jump and try to explore. And this is the nice and the joy about taking decisions. Trust me, it is like you open a valve for people who knows what is a valve and the flow of ideas, opportunities will start to come from the moment you decide, yes, I wanna do what I wanna do. Some people mention about procrastination, self image, time management, resources, skills. These are some of the people current beliefs that is holding them back. And to be honest, these are all mental programs. They're not actual. It's never been any problem. People, they said, I don't have a money. I will tell them money is never a problem. Money is everywhere. There are some people who has a lot of money and eager for people like you to help them with the brilliant ideas to make a project. So money has never been a challenge. So here, just to give it more elaboration about when we said, how, what is holding you back? Paddy, I think yesterday you mentioned brilliant things about when you set up a company in the Middle East. And few things happen, environment changes. So share with us, what was holding you back and some of your beliefs or habits, then things has changed. So I'd like to hear from you, Pat. Thank you very much, Mohammed, and good evening, everyone. It's so wonderful to have you with us this evening. Well, some of you, you were on the call last night and you heard uh, the difficulties that I had in really imagining that I could bring my company to the Middle East. And my older brother decided, as you know, to resign from his position as CEO and join me. And unbeknownst to me, he died very shortly thereafter. And the first thing that really stopped me was a deep, deep depression. Because in just over a year, I had lost first my husband, then my mom, then my brother. I had lost my dearest friends and I only, I, all I had left was my son and his now wife and they had not planned on having any children. So I was just kind of poor little me. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. It's too big. I can't do it. I'm a woman. I can't go to the Middle East alone. I'm 65 years of age. I can't be gallivanting all over the planet. All these paradigms, these habitual ways of thinking. And then, as I told you, I went to the uh, vision board uh, workshop that afternoon, and I began to put it all together. And within a month, boom, I had the phone call to speak at the conference in Muscat, where I met our colleague here, Mohammed. So that was great. Now, that's the beginning of it. It's like, yes, this is wonderful. But then the new set of paradigms. Well, who are you to think that you can go to the Middle East and talk to these people about communication? You don't even know anything about them. You only know what you read in the newspaper. You're not educated. You're not smart enough. You can't do it. What are you thinking? Get your head out of the clouds. Come on, this will never work. You're such a fool. They're on and on and on and on, just nonstop, chatter, chatter, chatter. You know, most of the conversations we have are with ourselves. And science tells us that about 85% of those conversations are negative self-talk. I was right in there. I was like, this is impossible. And I'm working away trying to get, I, I said, I, I don't know where the courage came from. I said, well, I will only come if you can find me work because I can't leave my practice and go halfway around the world for a Toastmasters conference. So they found me all kinds of work. And now I got to put together a seven hour seminar 
all men from the Middle East. I was terrified. Who, what, what? You don't even know what you're talking about. It just went on and on and on. Right even to when I got on the airplane to fly from Vancouver to Muscat. I got to tell you, I, I felt sick to my stomach because now it's like, uh-oh, imposter syndrome really bad. Like they're going to know that you're just a fake they're going to know that you don't know anything. You have no right. And then about halfway across Canada, which is a very big country, it takes hours to get halfway across Canada in the airplane. I said, okay, this is nonsense. You have to stop this right now because you're going to be sick. Here's all you can do, Patty Kennedy. You go, you just be yourself. You open up your heart you give away everything that's in there. They're either going to love you or they're going to hate you. But basically, it's out of your control. Stop this thinking. All you can do is bring yourself to the situation. And in that moment, I was able to do a paradigm shift. I just said, no, no, if I keep on this negative habitual, you're not, you can't do it. You have no education. You're stupid. What are you talking about? You're a figure skater. You're an athlete. You don't know what you're talking about. How can you? Yeah, but I worked in New York for, but I, yeah, but Patty, come on. It's all been fake. All this stuff just going on and on. And the closer, as I say, I got to that plane, I was literally felt sick to my stomach. And so I knew without knowing, I knew that I had to make a paradigm shift. It didn't matter that I'm a woman, I'm 65, I'm now 69. And just the other day I moved into a brand new country, UAE, here I am, my 11th country, I'm 69. My God, here was on my goal card. I got here, I closed the door and I sat down and guess what I said? What the hell have you done? What are you thinking? Are you out of your mind? You are 69 years of age. You can't do this. You're crazy. What are you thinking? When are you going to stop doing this? When? And I just said, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Paradigm shift right now. That's old, habitual thinking to do it. You're not worthy. You're not smart enough. You're not enough, not enough, not enough. Stop it. You created this little baby dream and you made it come true. So you got to put on your big girl panties and just get to work. You got to be a big girl and just do it. And I cried for about 10 minutes. I was terrified. What am I doing? I am living a beautiful life. I'm living a life that I love. But it takes, you've got to make these paradigm shifts. There is no external circumstance that will stop me from doing what it is. I desire to do. I'm a daughter of the great creator God, and I'm here to live my best life. You can do it, but it takes a paradigm shift, just noticing how you're thinking. It's all, it doesn't matter where it comes from. It doesn't matter who told you you were stupid, who told, it doesn't matter. If we all have those people that tell us we can't do stuff, we would tell ourselves we can't do it. It doesn't matter where it comes from. As we said yesterday, this work takes courage. To live a life that you love takes courage. But what else are we doing here? So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. And I'm so happy that you really had a change and made a shift in your own beliefs because if you did not, then I would not be able to meet and connect with you. So it's a small belief that I call them sometimes a false belief, those mental barriers, unless we really do a shift and change, then you will not see any change in your life. And like Patty, if she believed initially and worked um, uh, according to her old beliefs, she will not be able to set a company or to come to the Middle East. But this is a shift which was really important for her growth. I want to share my own story. I have many, but uh, this one was so inspiring also for me, like others, uh, on uh, running at 21 kilometers, which is a half marathon. And people who knows running, they will appreciate what I'm saying. But running at 21 uh, half marathon, it is, you need to spend two hours minimum just running running, running, doing nothing, and keep going on the same pace. So what happens, my story is as follows. When I decided I want to do it, 
this is how I was look like. I was overweight, uh, no exercise, nothing at all. So my health doesn't allow me. So this is one of the beliefs I have. Then the second belief, I decided I want to do it while I am at older age, about 50. And this is another belief. I always say people, don't let your age be your cage. And it was, to be honest, when I saw hearing people, are you crazy? You're too old. You don't, your health is, you're overweight. You will not. It will, you will be hurting your knees and, 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 and. So you will never be able to meet that one. But I had a desire that I want to run it. I don't know how. I didn't know how I'm going to do it. I never been doing it. And this is another belief because I didn't do it before. So I will fail. I said, come on. I will put all of this aside and start to shifting my beliefs that age is never been a barrier for me. So I will not put it as a cage for me. My health, I had was watching some people at here at 70 years, they would been running not the half marathon, but the full marathon, the 46 or 42 kilometers. So these are all mental barriers. So I decided, no, I want to go it. And this is where I start my plan, training plan, being disciplined. Then I start doing the shift. So I managed in one year to run a two half marathon. And this is uh, my pictures, how I become. It was some courage, as Paddy mentioned, that you need to do a shift in your current beliefs because your beliefs, it's a belief. Doesn't mean it is right or wrong. This is how the way you see things. If you keep seeing it this way, all right, you will be stuck your whole life. And uh, yeah, this is about the results you achieve. Uh, this is the program uh, me and Paddy were coaching people uh, called thinking into results. We will uh, cover it uh, tomorrow for people who will be interested uh, to join uh, our coaching program. So the paradigm, which is we covered, like time management. Time management has never been a problem. People think they can manage time. No one can manage time. Why? Because you and I and each one of us has 24 hours. You don't have... Uh, 50 hours and I have 24. We are the same thing. You need to change your concept and belief about time management. It is managing priorities. How you manage your priorities during the day, you have a checklist, things that you go, you start with the most important, then you go down the list. This is how you manage your day. It's not about time management. People have a lack of confidence, self-esteem, and tomorrow we will be covering this part. I don't feel I'm confident, I'm not able, I'm always a failure, uh, I will not be able to do it. I had one failure, I will, uh, uh, for sure. So you start building your own beliefs. Yeah, if I fail once, I will be failing all the time. Come on. This is a belief you are building because of your thoughts and mental barriers. Also the procrastinations, Controlled by surroundings. Many of us, they hear what other people are telling them and they follow what the masses are telling them. Like in my cases, if I want to hear you're too old to run a half marathon I, and I was impacted by the surroundings, I would never uh, do it because all the people are telling me so they must be true, which is not. And others' uh, people's opinion. So this, these are some examples just to highlight more about your paradigms have enormous influence over everything in your life. You put yourself in a box that you're not able to get outside. Your ability to earn that, oh, I will not earn more than 10,000, for example. And you put yourself in a box, you're convinced, so you don't uh, try more or to take an extra mile, or using the time, or your effectiveness, or your self-image, they put you in the box. The moment, and the moment you start shifting your paradigm, your beliefs, then you will have freedom. You will have a massive growth. And this is how people really understand the power of paradigm.
And I want to say that 96% of your results are created by your paradigm. 96, because this is good for ourselves that we don't think on every step we are doing. It's good that our subconscious mind is the one running the show because you don't, if I want to move my uh, hand up, I need to think, okay, how, what I need to do? I need to move this muscle, then this bone, then that bone, then imagine that one, but you do it without thinking. And this is the magnificent part about the, your uh, subconscious mind. However, you are with years, you've been programmed by the surroundings, by the family, by the schools, with some beliefs, with some ideas, that is really holding you back. One of the clients, I was talking to her and uh, thanks really for booking a call. She was telling me how there are certain beliefs at her school on the third grade that one incident had changed her life for the worse rather than the best in a way that she is afraid to express herself because the teacher had told her, no, I don't wanna hear you, just stop it. And you can see how you can really kill the imagination and the power of expression for your children. One incident and yeah. this beliefs has kept going and going in a way that is holding her back to express herself. So again, nothing will happen with your results until you change your paradigm. Maybe Paddy, you wanna share something. Well, you know, the story, um, you have to change your paradigm. And when I first started studying with Bob back in the mid 90s, I wasn't able to follow through because I really wasn't ready yet to address these paradigms. Also, he, he has really advanced the program now. So it's much more tried, tested and true. But I relate very much to the story of, you know, the teacher. Uh, and when I was in ninth grade, I have a deep voice. All of everybody in my family has a deep voice. When I'm on the phone, people always say, yes, sir. And I have to say, no, no, I'm a woman. And I have to put on this voice like this so that they now still say, yes, sir. But I had a grade nine teacher. Uh, she didn't like me. She was the principal of the school. She was a nun, Mother Marie Leo. May she rest in peace. And I hope she is resting in peace. <laughs> she, there were 75 kids in grade nine and we all had to be in the glee club, the singing club. Now, for some reason, this woman who did not, she, my brother and sister had gone before me and she didn't like them. So I ended up getting the brunt of the deal. She put me in with the sopranos. And we were singing that song from the sound of music or anybody knows it, climb every mountain. I mean, you, to get to the top notes, you just have to be Julie Andrews and I'm down here in the basement. And do you know uh, that in front of 75, of my classmate, she, she tap, tap, tap and stopped. And she said, doesn't Patty have a terrible voice? Don't you think that she should just move her lips? Now I was devastated, 14, you know, you're already self-conscious. So for my whole life, I felt I can't sing and I really love to sing and I, but no, you can't sing. And finally, I in my fifties, I got really fed up. This is what happens when you, start to examine your paradigms. After a while, you just get fed up with these habitual things that are telling you you can't do what you want to do. You just get annoyed. So a very dear friend of mine in Vancouver is a voice teacher. And so she was putting together a group of women. And she said, come on, Patty. And I said, well, I don't know. I can't sing. And she said, you've got a great voice. I said, I can't sing. So I went. And sure enough, she put me in with the altos. And there's a very few number of women with an alto voice. And she said in front of everyone, isn't it wonderful to have Patty here because we need an alto to help balance out all these beautiful sopranos. And everybody's like, oh, what a voice. You have such a beautiful voice. Imagine I went from 14 to 55, believing I can't sing. I'm embarrassed to sing. I only sing in the shower. And even then I'm embarrassed in front of myself. And here it was just, you got to get to that point. And, you know, we keep talking about courage. This is not, I, I don't want to dissuade anyone, but if you really want to live a life that you love, Begum, if you want to get that book published, then you just got to pull it up, 
You got to say, I'm worth it. I can do it. This is the life I want to live. It's mine. I'm going to claim this real estate. It's mine. I'm going to be the published author of that book. Don't give up. And all of you, it's the same thing. You just get to the point where you say, I cannot stand these little voices in my head anymore that are not mine, that are teachers, brothers, the world. Say no. I make those decisions and it takes courage, but it is well worth the ride. I encourage all of you. I don't really want to discourage anybody, but courage, you know, it's from that beautiful old heart from cool, the French word for heart and ages, that heart of ages, that part of us that knows exactly what's right and what we can do. Just dig into that beautiful, beautiful heart and say, come on, we're doing this because it's just a beautiful vista, a beautiful life. And we all deserve to live a life we love, all of us. Thank you, Patty. Really so inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I really lo I love that story. That, uh, I, had a, I, I had a teacher once who said, you gotta make your mess, your message. So you take all those things that happen in your life that were negative and you turn them into a teaching tool. So you make your mess, your message. And boy, I got a lot of messes. <laughs> true, true. I think you say in effect, one of the paradigm people is that uh, they let the other people opinion to become their reality. And then this is what happens with most of us. He mm -hmm. thinks I, I cannot uh, think, okay. This is my reality. Yeah, I, I cannot think. But I always say, don't let other people opinion. It is their opinion to become your reality. It's not a fact. So always uh, when we discuss about uh, the persistence formula, which is a nice one, one of the great things really you need to seal your mind from naysayers, people who will tell you you cannot do, you're crazy, uh, you will lose, you will fail, blah, blah. This is number three. I, I, I really encourage uh, some people. One time I do a program just talking about the persistence. And one of them is you need to seal your mind. You don't listen to others' opinion because they might hold you and you will not do anything. So now I want you, and so we will have enough time uh, to do a Q&A to think about a list of habits that you need a habits and belief you need to form to move you towards your goal. You selected a goal and you will notice that for each goal, you will find out there's something holding you back. For example, uh, uh, let's say for running, I have to overcome certain beliefs and habits. When I start writing my book, I had to have a different beliefs because I was believing I'm not good in writing at all. And this is what's holding me back. So in a way, when I started changing that paradigm, doing a shift plus have a discipline in writing, this is the moment I start, oh, things are working well. So now Ryan, look on your goal and think about it. What is one thing or two things I need really to change, either a belief or develop a new habit that will help me to towards my goal? So I will give you maybe one, two minutes. Okay, once you list down those habits, 
you need to create to start focusing and creating a new habits that are positive. So to give you an example, and this is one of the things we are teaching and the tools we're providing people when they start finding their paradigm, that we ask them to write down about your current situation, what things you don't like about what you are doing. For example, I'm a lazy guy. Uh, I'm always overloaded. I don't feel myself productive. I'm watching all the evening the TV or the social media. I never read. So th these are the current situation of mine. Then I ask him, can you write it down in a way that will make it positive? Things that you'd love to do. He said, uh, every evening before going to bed, I uh, start reading a book and I plan my next day what activities I want to do. And the second day, I wake up early, go to the gym, then start working my day. And I find myself, the moment I start uh, having planning my day and the priorities, you will, I will, uh, you will see yourself, you're more productive. So when I compare the two situations, the current situation, I'm a lazy guy, I'm overloaded. Uh, I uh, spend time on social media. So the new habits I want to start is maybe developing the writing habits or start planning my day for the, uh, for the next day to make me more productive. Because if you don't plan your day, other people will plan for you, trust me. You will find other people will keep you busy all day. So this is how we said, list the habits, your, the current ones and the ones you want to change that will help you to start uh, getting uh, or to help you to get your goal. Then you pick one or two habits that you have to focus on and you will find out there may be 10 things that you want to change. I always recommend just pick up one or two habits. Really will make a huge difference in your results. So today, uh, this is what I thought I'd be covering. Uh, anyone would like to contact us, he can contact us uh, through emails or uh, through Calendly for myself. I will now uh, stop sharing and will bring people who would like to ask us any questions about what we covered today and yesterday. So feel free. We'll uh, take for 20 minutes, uh, so till uh, 7.30 Dubai time another 20 minutes. Unless, uh, Paddy, do you like to share anything before we open the Q&A? Not a story, just a, just a word of support for what you're saying. You know, when we start this work, we get really gung-ho and excited and I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna change that. Before you know it, we're, we're doing maybe five or 10 new things. This is just another way of sabotaging yourself. Mohammed is absolutely correct. Take one or two new habits and get them under your belt. Earl Nightingale, Bob Proctor, Mary Morrissey, they say take 30 days, do it for 30 days. You've got the rest of your life to get those other new habits underway. But most of us get excited and it's like get New Year's. I'm gonna go on a diet, I'm gonna to go to the gym, I'm gonna read a book, I'm gonna start courses, I'm gonna, and before you know it by, you know, they call the third Monday of January Blue Monday because that's when everybody's off their resolutions and they're losing their self-esteem. And I think one reason why that happens is because we just try to do too much too soon. So let's walk gently. You know, an old teacher of mine used to say, Patty, if you must hurry, then hurry slowly. So hurry slowly as you build these new uh, habits, because these are the paradigms that you're changing. You've had for many, many, many years, and you learned them, you mastered them through repetition. Let's just take it easy on ourselves. Let's set it up in such a way that we actually can succeed and that we win-win and just take one or two move forward when you feel confident that that's now a habit okay i'm pretty good about going to the gym to the point where if i don't go i feel like i'm missing something then you can start to introduce a new one but i just want to reiterate what mohammed said just one or two at a time make it doable 
Otherwise, it's just a beautiful way to sabotage yourself. And then before you know it, you're right back at the start. Ah, this never works. And there, here come all those paradigms again. See, I've tried it all the time. It never works. Why do I bother? We, we all have these conversations. We're human. Absolutely. Yeah. So can we, anyone like to ask a question? I see Laurent. Go ahead, Laurent. Um, it's 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 a matter of um, how to create the discipline yes. and how long will it take um, to. I understand it between thirty to ninety days, but how 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 to create the discipline to avoid cheating because the temptation is so easy to say okay i'll do it tomorrow you know we had uh, i have this um, joke about night in, uh, in the army way just do it inshallah tomorrow but it's, it's yesterday when we were talking about goal I wrote a couple of things and suddenly I realized, no, you are talking about this situation so open. So find the right goal. And I share with you, I think my goal is to find the discipline as the focus to achieve, um, to achieve whatever enterprise I'm going to. And I kept that as a single goal. I discarded all of that. You know, I am educated, experienced enough to figure out if I want to go from point A to point B, what needs to be done. But somehow down the line, I lose the time. Why lose the focus? So how to, 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 to create does it require coaching, does it, whatever, is this discipline to whenever the train leave the station, make sure that the identified step I met without delay. So that my main paradigm is that I need to shift. You know, and even, Laurent, yeah. This is why it's really important to keep writing what you want. When you stay in touch with what you really, really want and you think about it, it's one thing to write it down once, but if you write it every day and if you do that practice that we were talking about yesterday where you're at the end and you see yourself having accomplished that, then you get more skin in the game, number one. So it, that writing down what I want every day is keeps that energy going because a lot of times when we fall off the track, if we just say, wait a second, what's my burning desire here? And that's why the goal has to be big. It can't just be this small little goal because it won't inspire you. It's got to be something big, something that makes you want to get up in the morning. So that's the first thing is to don't lose a track of what it is that you really want. The other thing is, you know, we always strive for perfection. It's gotta be just this way. And if I don't do it this way, then it's not gonna work. These are just all paradigms. Welcome to the world of being a human being. We all do it. We all start out and then we fall off and we've got to get back on and then we fall off. And it's just a practice. Discipline is a practice. I know because I had a very disciplined childhood and I know what got me out of bed every morning at four o'clock was I was going to the Olympics and I did, that was I couldn't see anything else but that. So when you do fall off, rather than say, oh, see, See, I always do this. I'm no good. No, no, no. Welcome to the world. Hello. Hello, human beings. You know, Bob teaches us, and we learn this a lot, that we are actually perfect within ourselves. Our DNA, everything is perfect. And I think one of the big mistakes we make when we head off to change our lives or to pursue a goal is we look for perfection on the outside. There is no perfection out there. It's just chaos out there. You got to just trust yourself. So, you know, we every Monday and Wednesday night, we have calls with a Canadian fellow who's in the Proctor Gallagher Institute named Doug Dane. And people will bring this question, you know, so what do I do? And he'll say, well, so what? I mean, what do you mean, so what? So what? You blew your discipline. Start again. 
start again. Take it easy on yourself. It's not the end of the world. Nobody died. Uh, you're just human. And go back to your burning, burning desire. And if you realize what's in at the end of that accomplishment, that'll make you want to do it again. That'll make you want to get up and do it again. Other than that, I don't know what else did. Mohammed, what do you have to say about this ongoing dilemma of discipline? <laughs> no, uh, I agree. This is when we talk about the persistence. One of the things you already highlighted is about your burning desire. It's a four steps. You can uh, read it in the Think and Grow Rich. But this is, I always teach a program, Four Pillars of Success, which are mainly, to be honest, is about the uh, persistence you should have a burning desire clear goal what you want if you're up and down trust me you don't have enough burning desire that burning desire is not enough so the way you do it is by visualization by living from the, and seeing yourself already you did achieve your goal people are shaking hands people are happy to work with you people are saying yeah we are the best people are recommending to work with you and, and so you start seeing yourself the second thing is you take a daily actions. The third one is seal your mind from naysayers. Try not to listen to the people, only listen to people who want uh, the best for you. And the fourth one, which is really important, find uh, like-minded people. Because if you, uh, I can ask you, who are the five people you are interacting most of the time? And you are the average of those five people. So be selective on who the people you will be spending more time with. Yeah. These things, I always try to use it in my life, in my kids, because I also share some of the stories how I get my kids after a big failure to be admitted, uh, to be accepted in the US in the medicine. I have two sons and two girls, so both of them, they are now in the US. So I use this material to help my family to achieve the goals. Back to your question, really. If you're not disciplined, that means you're, you, you don't have enough goal or uh, that desire, burning desire enough. Uh, just visualization, see yourself more and more about achieving the goal, what you want. Mm. Yes. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, I think the burning desire is there. Um, but I think it is, I'm still dragging some negative thought based on yep. past experience when yep. I engage it. When it happened uh, in my business environment, is there to comfort me that my burning desire is reachable, is achievable. So, I should not doubt myself being capable of doing that. And even within my business interaction, people are showing me that I'm capable of doing more for them. Because when you ask a question, I have the answer. So does it mean I underestimate myself? I don't trust my capability? Yes. There is a little bit of that, but I think most of my customers are just burning. Yes, as I mentioned, my main goal is to bring the focus, etc. But the main goal is to um, project myself within the next six to nine months. I to recognize um, business and marketing concern. So, yes, I think it's only me dragging down. And we, I know, as I say, it's probably 50% a discipline issue or 50% a self-confidence. I don't know. I need to, I need to eradicate that to move forward. Those are the paradigms and they're subconscious. You're not aware. You know, for me, these paradigms are like little stealth bombers, right? They fly just in under the radar. 
and you're get going and everything is great. And then all of a sudden they drop their bomb and you don't even know what happened. This is the subconscious mind, which has been programmed over the years. Now, I know enough of your life story because of the presentation that you gave. And so I'm sitting on the outside going with a life like this of these amazing accomplishments. How can this man have these paradigms? But we all do. So you, we have to be gentle with ourselves. We have to have a conversation with ourselves. We say, it's okay. It's okay. I don't know. You know where these thoughts have come from. Your work is magnificent. There's no doubt about it. If you want to hire a designer for posters, for any of that kind of content, this is the man for it. This man's work is, I love to recommend him because he does such a terrific job all the time. He makes me look good for recommending him. And I like that because it's, it's a it's good. So this is what this is about tonight are those paradigm shifts. You don't want to spend all your time going, well, who said that? And what? When people say no, those naysayers, they're really talking about themselves. When they say you can't do that, that's impossible. They're really saying for me, I can't do that. That's impossible. But we tend to accept it like it's written in stone. It's not. So you don't have to sit down. You can write down, as Muhammad suggested, write down these paradigms, write down these thoughts. If you want, you could say, well, where does that come from? If you want. But more than anything, just write them down. You can burn them. This is a very common thing that Bob gets us to do. We write down all this negative self-talk and then you shred it or you burn it. And you just say, that's it, I'm done. And you have to do it over and over because right. we learn these things through repetition. And now we have to use repetition to learn the new thought system. But when you, I'm telling you, I'm sitting on the outside and I think we're all like this, you know, we look at other people and we think, well, if you could just see us, see you the way we see you, you wouldn't have any of these paradigms. But hey, we're human. And 85% of what we say to ourselves is you're no good. You can't do it. Who do you think you are? You're an imposter. You can't do that. That'll never work. You don't have the money. You don't have the time. Yeah, that's what we do to ourselves. And we have to become the captain of our ships. And you can yes. do it. So you just write them down, take a look at them, study them or not. I, you know, I used to study them. I think it's a waste of time. It doesn't matter who said what. It doesn't matter. It, not true. Mm. It's just not true. Yes, you, it's true. And you see on, on the, my personal profile, there are two Latin quotes Carpe diem, quam, credula, postulo, mean enjoy the day and so on. And the second one is I belong to the tribe that I'm deaf and win. I think I need to be here to the second, second uh, quote. To make sure that I'm with you all. Anyway, I leave the floor to somebody. Yes, I'd like to give you the Yeah, maybe just one thing before uh, Alia can uh, uh, say her questions to add, Lauren. Really find a support system, find a group of people who can really help you and be committed like your body who will be make sure that you are committed to what you are doing. And this is what me and Paddy, when we do a group coaching, it's in a way to provide that like-minded people, the supporting system for people to be committed and do the work they are expecting uh, them to do. All right, so Alia. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I have a question about decision. So you mentioned that if we want to go to where we want to go and achieve the goal that we want to achieve, we need to understand where we are and where we want to go. And we need to make a decision to, 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 to get there. I also read the chapter in Napoleon Hill's book, uh, Thinking Grow Rich, about decision over and over. I kind of understand, but I want to understand it better. If you could simplify and clarify what is that in, in the decision making that, you know, take us to where we are, where, where we want to be. If you could just, you know, explain it better to me, maybe I will understand it better, please. 
Right. Do I go ahead? You you go ahead on this one, Mohammed. I will join in. All right. Uh, for me, I'll give you my own experience. Uh, I'm similar to you. I, I did not understand what do you mean take a decision. So what the heck is was doing? So when I joined uh, Bob Proctel, I wasn't getting the results that I want, to be honest. Uh, this is on one side. And I was, oh, I'm not ready. I, I need to read more. Oh, I need to take other course. I need to take this one. All right, no. So I, I was really struggling. At one day, I met one of the people who was in the inner circle. She's an introvert. You will find her. she's the top consultant in Bob Proctor at that time. And you can see her sitting by herself. Nobody's talking to her. So I asked her, her name is Jacqueline. I asked her, I need just one advice from you, Jacqueline, to start getting the results. She started uh, looking at me, smiling. She said, just go out and meet people. So what do you mean? She said, just go out and meet people. Then you will start learning and finding out what things you need to know. You will be testing. And then, so it's a, only a small decision you need to take in a way, just surrender, don't be afraid, take a decision and start moving. And this is what made me uh, that event where I start getting that result. Simply that person, he challenged me. He challenged everyone and we were sitting in a group of people and challenge each one of us to go now and book a call with a, a people to tell them about what we are teaching and coaching. And while he was talking, I said, come on, this guy is crazy. I'm living in Dubai, we are in Canada, there's eight hours now, the time is almost, for them it's eight or nine o'clock or almost midnight, who the heck will be taking my calls? Then I said, oh, Bob said, take a decision. I said, okay, let me surrender. I will go and see. I was trusting that because I have faith in what Bob was saying. So the moment I went out, I didn't know whom to call. Immediately two people came to my mind. I dropped to three people a message or maybe five people. Two people immediately said, yeah, we can talk now. It's 9 p.m. Come on, nobody will answer. Then the third one, he said, yeah, let's do it tomorrow. What? My God, what is happening really flows? Why I'm making my own barriers? And I was still on you, start talking to you, blah, blah. And as I said, that uh, event, I, you know, from a simple decision, I trusted, I overcome my fear or mental barriers. Th this is when we talk about just take the first step. Don't worry, nothing will happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, Patty, you want to add? Well, I agree, you know, it's again, um, it says looking for perfection. Like, well, what if I make the wrong decision? Well, what if you make the wrong decision? Then you can just back up and make another decision. I have this expression, you know, well, nobody died. So as long as nobody died, I'm good to go. I can do it again. I can do it differently, right? So I think that we all have this experience and it's scary to make a decision because a decision is a big commitment. You may, once you make the decision and you tell people that you're gonna do this, then no, oh, well, now you gotta do it, right? Otherwise you get into those paradigms, well, I'll look like a fool. Well, what will they say? Well, what will they think? This is really about knowing who you are. This whole program of thinking into results and what Muhammad and I are talking about to you about this week is really just finding out like who am I and what what do I bring to the world and not censoring it not judging it not letting those outside voices and you can't do that that's ridiculous just it this is why I keep coming back it takes courage but we all have courage just it's about making the decision and it often comes on Facebook and it's true that when you make a decision it's as if the whole universe conspires to work with you I remember when I was young and I, you know, I, I had fought a disability after my many years of training and people used to say to me, Patty, you've got a great voice for radio. So I wasn't living in Toronto and I had literally no money. 
And I uh, went to the National Broadcasting School. It was 1990. They wanted $5,000. I thought, $5,000? Where am I going to find five? I got no money. What am I going to do? And I had uh, $20 to my name. And I was, it's in Toronto. And after my audition, then they accepted me. But I had to come up with all this money. And I went downstairs and I had a burger and a beer because I live in the West and I can have a burger and a beer. And I spent my whole $20. And I was terrified. But I made a decision that no matter what, I'm going to do this. I want to do this. This is good for me to do this. I really, really, really want to do it. And you know, the next day, $2,500 just came to me. A friend said, I was thinking about you the other day. And a long time ago, you helped me out. And now um, I just thought I'd repay you. I couldn't remember how I had helped them out. They sent me $2,500. It was my down payment. And then I was able to make up um, the rest of the payments and I got my broadcasting I got my broadcasting diploma done and uh, you know one some of the most important work I do is I'm a voice coach and I work with women a lot of women on uh, finding your voice the courage it's called your brave voice finding the courage to speak up and then training the voice um, as a it's the greatest instrument in the world and it's the hardest instrument to play and I'm passionate about and I chose radio not tv because of the art of the voice I had no idea I literally blew my last money and I'm sitting there thinking, well, that was really stupid, because <laughs> now you got one, you got you got one token to get on the subway to go home, and now you're well, now what are you gonna do? But I just made the decision, and the universe came together, and I did it. And as I say, it was one of the very best decisions I ever made. And I was so scared; I thought I was going to be sick to my stomach, but I did it. So you have to, you know, in the West we say, I double dog dare ya, I dare ya. Find your courage and I dare you to do it. If it's the wrong decision, you just back up and say, well, okay, that decision didn't work. Let me see if I can rethink this and come up with a decision that's, that's better. Nothing is written in blood. Nothing is written in stone. We're allowed to make mistakes. We're works in progress. We're not pieces of art. We are pieces of art that are being created, but we are not the complete version. We will not be the complete version of ourselves until we lay our head on the pillow for our last breath. And other than that, you're just a work in progress. You get to make mistakes. You get to fall down. You got, got to get yourself right back up. That's one thing I loved about being a figure skater. When you, first of all, ice is very slippery and you're on those skinny little blades and you fall a lot. And when you fall, you just have to get right back up because the music keeps going. The show carries on. It was one of the best lessons I've ever learned in life. And it's the same when it comes to decision. If you fall down, you just get up, dust yourself off. So oh, that didn't work. Let me see. And go back to the drawing board and off you go again. It's your life. God gave you this life, your life. You're the only one that has your gifts and your talents. Nobody else has your gifts or talents like you do. Never have had, never will have. You're the only one that's just you. You have a right. You have a God-given right. So don't worry about the decision. Don't look for perfection. Perfection's inside. Trust yourself. If you fall, you just get up. You keep on going. Thank you, Patty. Very inspiring. Okay, any more questions? Maybe we can take one more than close. All right. Maybe I will end up to follow what Paddy said. Uh, there's a nice quote for Bill Gove. He's a famous uh, public speaker. He said, if I want to be free, I got to be me. Not the me you want me to be, not the me my spouse want me to be, not the me my children want me to be. If I want to be free, I got to be me. So this is the way I mean, you got to be yourself. Thank you all and uh, have a great evening where you are. Maybe the people in the US have a great day. Good morning. Great morning and looking forward to talk to you tomorrow, same time. All the best. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Have Good a night. great night, a great day. Ciao.
Ciao.